Does body language and the evidence prove that Micah and James Stauffer adopted their son for YouTube views and then returned him once he was old news? Find out next. Welcome back to the channel, Shakers. Derek Van Shake here. Micah Stauffer is a 33-year-old YouTuber with around 700,000 subscribers. Outfit of the day, I'm gonna link this shirt down below. And her husband James is an automotive YouTuber with close to a million subscribers. Because these seats are as old as they are, they have four biological children together and decided to adopt a two-year-old boy from China who they knew had special needs. They quickly found a little boy named Huxley. However, after two and a half years with Huxley in their home and as part of their family, they decided they didn't want him anymore and returned him like he was some dress she bought at Bloomingdale's. However, what's even worse is that Micah is a YouTube mommy vlogger and seems that she may have used Huxley's adoption journey as content to grow her YouTube channel. So we're gonna break down Micah and James's body language along with piecing together the evidence to finally reveal the truth behind adopting their now ex-son Huxley. Now... Let's get started. I have probably seen over 400 kids profiles. We start back in 2016 when Micah first announces that she's adopting Huxley. Now listen to what she says and see what you think. However, none of these kiddos spoke to me. Spoke to me. And then I came across this one little guy's picture. His picture spoke to me so much. Like it gives me chills just thinking about his little picture. Yes, she admittedly chose which human child she should adopt based on a single picture and curiously was mainly focused on looks alone. Even when you adopt a dog, you don't base your adoption on looks alone or a single picture. And this is a human. So I called up the agency and I asked, is this little guy's file taken or is he locked up? Actually, He's not locked up yet. How the child acts, what the child needs, what you can provide, what you cannot provide, how the child interacts with others. Will the child fit in with our existing family? Would the child thrive where we live? There are so many major questions. Forget about all those important questions. What mattered most to Micah was how the child looked. I wonder why. Right, because what matters most for a perfect mommy vlogger family on YouTube, yes, how things appear and how she can come across to her viewers. We are in the process of bringing home a little boy from China. Did you notice how she said little boy in that noticeably higher pitch? A little boy from China. That's to subconsciously imply the innocence of the child, therefore making her appear as his savior and coming across to her subscribers as even more wonderful and perfect. I'm not doing this to be like holier than thou or to look like a certain way. I just don't want people to think that I'm coming on here like saying this to be like braggy or like to be like, wow, I'm such a good person or anything like that. That is the last reason I would want to ever, ever, ever do this. Now listen to Micah curiously say this. I kind of want to share with you in different steps everything that we are going through, all of our emotions and just everything so you guys have an opportunity to See, this is this entire process documented. Right, Micah is blatantly telling you what she's gonna do. She's gonna make YouTube content on her adoption process. And she's not talking about documenting any of this for any other reason than making YouTube content. In YouTube vloggy world, the best content is when viewers are interested to check up on the progress of a project. For example, I bought a Lamborghini partially to make project type vlog content on my vlog channel. We're turning it into a flame throwing Lambo race car. This thing is going to pop. I know I said it. I said it again. It's gonna pack. However, Micah on her mommy vlogging channel apparently chose to adopt a child who has special needs as her little channel project. We most likely knew we wanted a kiddo that was a special focus kiddo, meaning that they had a medical condition. That's right. She and her husband wanted a child who has special needs. And I think you know why, right? It was at least partially to boost her perfect mommy vlog cred that she not only adopted overseas, but she also adopted a child who has special needs. <laughs> Normally, it would be wonderful and admirable, but it must be done for the right reasons and certainly way more than just for her vlog because if the why isn't strong enough, it's not gonna be fun for anyone. Now, notice her curious demeanor, body language, and tonality when she mentions special needs. So we came to a consensus that these are all of the conditions that we would be open to. Right, she says it with odd enthusiasm and a little smile, like those special needs conditions excite her. These are all of the conditions that we would be open to. And 
may be exciting for her to make content on it, get views, and increase her mommy vlogger cred, but special needs conditions are very real and require real mental, physical, and emotional work every single day. As an RN, I kind of knew that I would be fairly comfortable with quite a few things. Yeah, there's a big difference between occasionally coming across someone who has special needs at work and being a mother to someone who has special needs. Because I have seen so many different conditions in my scope of practice. Another big smile when talking about special needs and never mentioning all the work that is required. Possibly also her apparent narcissism made her believe that she could just fix them. More on that later. So. My comfort level is very, very, very high. Now we fast forward to almost four years to May of 2020. And here they're telling the world why no one has seen Huxley for the past several months. First, notice what Micah and James are wearing. Yeah, they're both intentionally wearing white. And of course, white shows purity and innocence, the same reason why brides traditionally wear white. Can you wear a white wedding dress, young lady? Now, Charmy, you can wear a white tuxedo. Partners always know when they're wearing the same color, right? Especially when they're about to appear on camera. And if it's not twinning day, one would change, so they're not wearing the same thing. So this was surely intentional. They clearly seem to proactively wear white to make themselves appear good, pure, and innocent. However, when people see right through their little trick, it drastically backfires. Also, as you saw before, Micah doesn't usually wear eyeglasses. Can you guess what that's for? Right, it's to create a barrier to help cover her eyes when she fake cries and exaggerates her crying. So this is by far the hardest video James and I have ever yeah. publicly had to make. Did you notice how they're trying to come across as sad? That's not their true emotion here. Watch again. So this is by far the hardest video James and I have ever yeah. publicly had to make. Right, they're not sad here like they're trying to make you believe. They're actually very nervous. We see that with her self-comforting touches, her hands swinging in a cut motion, just as she says, publicly had to make. Publicly had to make. Indicating that she's extremely nervous, telling the public what happened. James also shows nervousness with an increased blink rate, prolonged eye closings to shut himself out so he's removing himself from the situation and nervous gulps. They know they did something that isn't gonna look very good for them. And now they're gonna have to try and get you to buy their cover-up story. But before I get into the video, I did just wanna say thank you to how amazing our viewers have been. This is also known as sucking up, but she's doing much more than just that. She's using a psychological trick known as herd mentality. We are much more likely to do something if we know that others who are similar to us have done it before. How amazing our viewers have been. I don't know much about them personally, but they seem like master manipulators. So what we'll be doing is looking for their slip ups as they go. We have some viewers who have been just like so incredibly kind and respectful of our son's privacy. Now Micah furthers her sucking up to tell you how to act and what she wants, which is to try and get you to nod your head, write a poor Micah and James message in the comments so you don't look or think further into this. Now see if you think her little crying part here is real or fake. I just want to say thank you. Like that really got me through some really hard times and I just want to say thanks. Like you have no idea what that means to me and the, some of the special messages that you've sent. Like, just thank you. Thank you for the bar. Right, it seems to be fake. There's no redness in or around her eyes, no tears, which make her massively sad tonality incongruent. We've analyzed the difference between fake crying and real crying several times on this channel before. However, what's more insightful than her fake or at least very exaggerated emotion is why would Micah be fake crying about her followers supporting her? What do you think? Thank you. Thank you for the bar. Right, she's trying to gain sympathy from the viewers so that people don't blame her and her husband. Essentially, all of this is Micah and James setting the stage to divert away from the main shocking issue. That she returned her child like he was a dress that she bought at Macy's that when she got it home, she thought it made her look a little fat. You know, I tried on a lot of other dresses that did not work. <laughs> She's diverting away from her ex-son Huxley, who of course is the real victim here and are now playing victims themselves to avoid public backlash over what they did. Now watch how much they talk about themselves in their little video here. James and I, 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 I,
transparent on files. And if anything, my child is not returnable. Not returnable. He's our son and that's that. Once Huxley came home, there was a lot more special needs that we weren't aware of and that we were not told. Did you notice how James is trying to deflect away, claiming that the file on Huxley wasn't 100% accurate? Right, he's trying to draw your attention to the adoption agency to blame them and away from themselves for returning their child. But did you notice Micah? Watch again. There was a lot more special needs that we weren't aware of and that we were not told. Yeah, she's curiously authentically calm now, when it should be a very sad moment thinking about all of what Hux will have to manage all throughout his life. Right, it's because Micah is clearly satisfied that James is doing a good job of deflecting away from her, and surely feels more vindicated by what he's saying. Yes, it's all about Micah, how she looks, and how she feels. And their former son wasn't helping them any longer, so they got rid of him. When her youngest child was born more recently, that's when she started to stop posting Huxley on her YouTube channel. Also, do you all recall what major thing happened on YouTube in January of 2020? That's right, YouTube's COPPA rules took effect, where if a YouTuber posts content and children are the main focus of the video, that video would hardly get any ad money. Yes, she now had a special needs child who required a lot of extra attention, who she could hardly monetize anymore. Combined with the demands of a newborn, who she admitted was the most difficult of her four biological children, Onyx has been really challenging. So was goodbye to Huxley. That's the sad truth. After multiple assessments, after multiple evaluations, y'all aren't gonna trade him in, we're not gonna return him. Y'all aren't gonna trade him in, we're not gonna return him. He's our boy. Numerous medical professionals have felt that he needed a different fit and that his medical needs he needed more. We're deflecting, putting the blame on the doctors who they claim made the decision that Hux should live with a different family? Clearly deceptive, watch again. After multiple assessments, after multiple evaluations, numerous medical professionals have felt that he needed a different fit and that his medical needs, he needed more. She seems to be holding back a little odd incongruent smirk. While she was saying that, did you notice she was constantly putting her fingers together, creating a defensive frontal barrier, while also giving herself a self-comforting hand massage at times to relieve the likely tension of deception. Also, what doctor or medical professional would ever recommend a parent give up their child to another parent? It's totally bogus. And did you notice that she blended and mumbled a key part of those deceptive words together? He needed a different fit in his medical needs. We talked about this in my previous video on Ellen DeGeneres. How was the party? I wasn't invited. Since liars feel nervous from lying, they'll sometimes say their lie fast, mumbled, and muffled. Fit in his medical needs. Fast because feeling the danger of getting caught in the lie is very unsettling, and mumbled or muffled because they know lying is wrong, and they're not proud to say their deceptive words clearly and confidently. Do I feel like a failure as a mom? Like 500? percent so when you get like insidious hurtful comments it just like really makes it hurt worse oh poor micah let's all feel bad for you for being a bad parent but yeah what about the poor kid can you only imagine what she's done to that poor kid's impressionable formative years he's surely gonna grow up with trust and abandonment feelings he was already going through a lot and then mommy vlogger comes along needing him for her youtube content so that she can seem like super mom for saving this young foreign kid but then they abandon him because when the vlogging camera is off it's not all claps cheers and applauses but actual work now listen to what Micah says because she realizes that it is coming across as all about her. It's not about me at all, but it's just like this journey has been, the last couple months have been like the hardest thing I could have ever imagined. Right, she tries to defend herself that it isn't all about her in convincing and not just conveying, but then goes right back into confirming that it is all about herself by talking all about herself. And notice all that amped up emotion is all emotion about feeling sorry for herself. While their former son is the real victim in all this, and they are the perpetrators. When she and her husband adopted him, she surely thought that she could magically change him, making him all better. I was super rejected to the point where I didn't, I didn't expect it. My kids in my home, they're super attached to me. Narcissists will many times come across as believing that they have superpowers. Because they feel so superior to everyone else, they believe they can do things that are simply not physically possible to do, such as making a child's special needs magically fade away. The reason why we can't go into detail what 
actually transpired. We're truly going to protect Huxley's privacy and not let people know what happened, what everything that went on. To make us make this decision. this decision. They adopted him when he was two years old. He was four years old when they abandoned him. She had said in a vlog that he was doing this when they first got him home. Bradley very much disliked Huxley because when Huxley came home, he would bite, pinch, hit. And as a four year old, it's not even like it's physically possible for him to be acting like Junior from the 1990s movie Problem Child. <laughs> And she said repeatedly that Huxley was making big improvements. Watch. Things still are not perfect, but it is so much better than it was right when we got home from China. We are seeing one of the happiest, brightest little boys ever. And now he is about 80% of the day. We have smiles, we have giggles, and we have laughter. One of the big things that he does in the morning is he does his morning chores without even being asked. And he's starting to do a lot better, which is really nice and has been helping our nighttime routine go a lot smoother. So it appears Huxley made some very big improvements. It probably got a lot better, meaning what? Anything that happened in the home that was hard for Hux, that's not fair for me to put out there publicly. That's his privacy. So we're not gonna talk about that. That's why they keep talking about not giving you any details. It's because they're extremely defensive over what they know would be tremendous backlash against them. Because all the evidence points to Huck's getting better and not worse. When a person legally adopts a child, it's for life. Of course there's gonna be struggles. And some kids, yeah, they're gonna have more struggles than other kids. But you can't return your children. And remember, they had him for years. Let's play the cute footage. How does a conversation to return your child even start with your spouse? How did these two knuckleheads find each other where they're both perfectly okay with returning their child? Immediately when she gave me another diagnosis, I looked at the bright side. I was like, you know, that could be awesome. There could be so many good things about that second diagnosis. How is the second diagnosis good? Maybe for her to boost her mommy vlog cred and make video content, but that's something else that your child will have to deal with and manage throughout their entire life. It was like she was on a mission to come across as the world's most perfect mommy vlogger by saying what she thought the most perfect mom would say. And the level of unconditional love that we're starting to develop for this little boy is just unbelievable. And notice this here. I imagined Huxley to be this like shy, sweet, little, little. But I just imagined this like shy little guy who just, just wants to be held and cuddled. Right, Micah seemed to make up this juvenile vision in her head that Huxley is this poor overseas boy that just needed to be loved on and saved by his new Captain American mommy. And that is the furthest thing from the truth. It took a little while to get adjusted from what, who I thought I was going to meet that day versus who my son actually is because for an entire year I had planted this little seed in my mind and it had started growing. And seems that she was taken aback when she realized that Huxley wasn't like that at all, surely causing additional ill feelings to her newly adopted son. When we got Hux, we didn't know a lot of these unknowns and when agencies or adoption agencies have more pieces to the pie or they have more pieces, it makes the matching process a little better yeah. or a healthier match. Micah is trying to make it seem to you that by living with them, they were able to help Huxley because by living with them, they were able to find out more about Huxley so that he can be placed in a better family. That's all totally bogus and said to completely deflect from all the inevitable emotional harm that they did to the kid. And they found somebody that they felt would be ultimately the best fit. Despite Micah and James claiming that they found Huxley a new forever family, that's not actually what happened. Huxley is in foster care and is not legally adopted. So for her to say that is deceptive. Show me mom. Mama. You said it! You did a good job. Do you want a kiss? They were his mommy and daddy for over two years. He loves making coffee with dad in the morning. They like make it together. He's a little barista. It's so cute. He called them mommy and daddy and they selfishly gave up on their commitment to their own child because they didn't want to deal with his special needs anymore because their why apparently wasn't very strong at all. Since it was all superficial for super mommy vlog cred and apparently for making video content to grow her stupid YouTube channel.
Give this video a thumbs up if you think Huxley was used by them. Give this video a thumbs down if you think Huxley wasn't used at all by them. Now in the comments, what would you say to Micah and James for using Huxley? Let everyone know in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button now because we don't want you to miss out on new body language and investigative videos that always seem to shake up YouTube. And I'll see you at the top.